I know you all see me sitting this up and thinking, what in the heck is he doing? That ain't how you do a door jam and all that. All I'm trying to do is because we're casting these walls in place, I need an exact opening or a little bit of play because you might get it a little off. You need some adjustment. So I'll probably go maybe a quarter inch play on each side or something and uh, get an opening made that'll fit this door. So all I want to do is just kind of semi-mock, you know, we don't have our corners 45 or anything yet. Just kind of mocking it up. So this is the door jams I bought. I bought them at um, City Hardware. And you see it says the profile solid and you can get them different widths there. They sell them different widths. I got the two before because we are casting four inch walls and uh, for a seven foot tall door. I think that's kind of funny, you know. We're over here um, in Asia and it's pretty much a metric system, but yet you still find foot Imperial being used everywhere. You'll buy 20 foot long steel, you'll buy 12 foot long boards, eight foot long boards, 10 foot long boards, four by eight sheets of plywood. I mean, everything's measured like that, but yet, you know, they're still using liters. They're not using gallons, or they call galloons, galloons. They don't say gallon, they'll say galloon. And uh, they'll measure and give you one measurement and say, you know, we need uh, 32 inches and the next time they'll give it to you in centimeters instead so they may say oh it's it's 210 and then the next time they may say you know seven foot and you know don't hold me that that's exactly what it is I'm just giving for instance Uh, I got everyone working downstairs and you know this one's been sometimes a little time just working by myself so I sent them off and away so I just have a little little time here on my project myself so I've got this uh, little utility room right here um, it's set up it'll have a wall plug there uh, this is a wall to the bedroom there's already one in that corner there'll probably be a bed along that wall on the other side got a wall plug there starting to put my batting on got my sheet for the inside here well I have everybody working on the rooms down below uh, like Marlon he's out here sifting sand right now for them to render with um, guys are mixing mixing up mortar uh, actually what they're using for rendering out there in the street right now covering those hollow blocks down below uh, Joel's helping them out on that down there right now I've got Joel cutting strips to make um, some door bucks for three doors right here and me I'm up here uh, putting up this plywood and all on the forms yeah every piece don't have to be cut so what you can do is if it runs out past where you need like this here it ended up going out past where you need it I don't know got lucky on this one on about two and a half inches well your other sheet you see this little slot down here that's where the wall is going up here and budding just butt it right up and actually it's gonna work out perfect and you can just put a two by two up this corner and screw it and uh, That'll help you get your cribbing on as well. But let's just say if it was an extra foot, still just put your tube of two and leave that extra foot hanging out there. You know, just put you a, a dead end, a stop, you know, a block of where your wall needs to end. And leave the rest hanging. Don't just chop everything up. That's where you're really going to waste your wood right there, chopping everything up. Then try to build to where you know that the sheets are going to work. And let me give you for instance on that. This is eight foot. 
four foot sheet and a four foot sheet. I built it so that eight foot inside right there. So it all works out then. I don't have to go chopping up sheets. If I built it nine foot, now right here I'm gonna have to rip a sheet down because see this has a wall turning on it. So if you can in your design, try to stick with some increments of like four foot and um, eight foot and maybe you want to split one sheet and you're going to have it and you can make a 10 foot wall two fours and a two and you can use that two foot sheet again and again you'll end up with a couple of them but you know just try to be wise on it another thing about once you have this stuff up you can use a lot of your pieces of wood again and again it's not that much work like i went right over here to this wood scrap pile I grabbed this piece of uh, cocoa lumber here. It's already drilled because we have a set pattern. Well, the winds are picking up. It's already drilled because we have a set pattern. Just slid the bolts in. This went and got this one. I can tell it's already drilled too. It's got a set pattern on it. See, they've drilled some other holes in it as well, but the pattern I'm looking for is there. Let me show you, I know it's there. So here it is, see? These two match, these match. There's that one, there's one down at the end. Here's this one, it matches. Here's this one, it matches. So see, there it is. I'm not sawing. I've sawed nothing on this wall. That's two four by eight sheets. Some lumber that was already pre-set up. Easy peasy, easy peasy. Got this form here, we can clean it up. See, it's got my radiuses in it. It is just what I need for this column right here. I don't have to build a new one. This one right here has poured, I think it's maybe on its fourth column to an inside now. I think we've pulled, pulled this one four times now, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, there you go on that. And it was originally, this was originally uh, this center column right there, the very first one I showed in the video, nice center piece. This is it split in half, made into two. Split it in half, made it into two. Here's half of it here. And there's the other half of it laying over there. Because we can use those again and again. That one has been used again and again. We used it here, we used them here, on down over there. Once you get set up, it's repeat, repeat, repeat with the same materials. It does not cost that much to do it. Look, I got all my bolts in here, all the spacers on there. All but the top row. I didn't put it because you just reach right by hand and top and do that easy. So less to be shaking around, the better. So there you go. Starting up with the cribbing up the back right here. Whatever the little words are, you know, whether it be a soldier or this and that, who cares? I, I got one of these uh, new people again. If you don't go to their degree of terminology college and get your full four-year course, your four-year course of terminology class. Got my sheet leaning up there. You're going to start at the bottom. Not not leaning this much, but you're going to lean it a little bit, and you're going to start at the bottom, start slipping those in. You're going to lean it up a little bit more, get it on your next row, lean it on in some more, get it on the next ones, and just work up like that. You don't just try to put it up there flat and push. You're going to be knocking your bolts out. You're going to be knocking your plastic off down in the wall. Your PVC, your spacers. So, uh, yeah, just start at the bottom nice and easy it's going to take more than one person it's easier that way and uh i let these guys do it i've shown them how to do it i let them do it because they can react faster and speak in their native tongue of up down left right however they want it and call it and so i just let them do it it's easier i got everything here ready i'll call them up here in a minute and say hey come slip this sheet on here Tatasa, Sanke, Sanke, Nola, Tatai, Rod, Gamela, Gamai, 
There it is, ran up on there. We knocked that out real quick. I'll get this next sheet here ready and uh, this is what you want to watch out. You don't want any one of these to fall down inside your wall after you done got it all together. Are you going to be uh, stripping the forms back down to get in there and get that most of the time? Mm, it can be a job. So keep these things up in there. All right. Well, I am ready to move on here to the next one. You see this bar right here? It's called rebar. It's also called deform bar. Rebar or deform bar. Cord where you at in the world? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I call it. I call it completely deformed because I take this big old sledgehammer right here and I deform the heck out of it if it's blocking one of my holes. See like right there, now it's deformed. <laughs> you see that? Now it's deformed. If it's in my way, I deform it. You see that? It's now deformed. So it is truly deformed bar. Here we are again. Uh, Joel built a buck here. I really wanna make sure, I'm gonna double check this, that he's got the spread correct on it. I'll double check all of it. But here's a buck it's going to go on the wall right here for this little room for the doors that i bought and uh i'm going to refine it a little bit more joel got it going there but i'm going to do a little bit more refinement to it i want it a little bit better than that but it's a good start it's a good start uh it's the first time he built one of these bucks for me out of all these projects we've been doing uh i, I wanted it where we can still pass through because we need to get in this small room to do work while that buck's in there so Tim, be sure and leave space. If we can just step through the center gap, it's okay if that bottom's more solid, even up here in the top, more solid. And that's probably what I'll do is uh, remove that bottom piece of cocoa lumber he put in and put another big piece of plywood and it helps keep it square as well. If that's on the buck, four inches thick. Your sheet of plywood will come up here on both sides of it and We'll get it all sandwiched down and it'll be good to go. Well, ended up a rainy afternoon here for sure. It sure did. You look at that, it is solid, overcast, and I'm solid wet. I tell you what though, uh, I just kept on working through it anyway. The guys, they just like, but moose boy, and they were all downstairs. I started plucking them back one by one. Give them a task to do. If it was just lightly showering, man, come on and uh but they had a lot going on downstairs out of the rain too so maybe they just want to leave the canoe out here in the rain it was okay with me i was enjoying it tell you why i'd rather work in some little light showers and rain than i had in that blistering sun without a doubt well let's walk around and let's see what's been done you can see that it's getting formed in all up here in the front now this is over here in the kitchen. It's all taking shape. Um, I got the forms all done. On both sides, I, I like a little bit more cribbing. I got the main ones on here, a little bit of help. I call the boys up to help me every once in a while, I'll get these boards shoved on the bolts. Uh, but this one's all up in here, so the, the pantry is taking place. Let's move on forward here into the hallway now you turn right and go into the cr here that's the buck it's already made for the window that'll be up there high high right up there uh, in the shower area this is the buck right here made for 
the pantry right here for the door it's going there i've already bought the doors in the jam so once we cast and the house is ready for finishing all we have to do is just slip the door and the jam in there you know slip the jam in then the door of course and um it's ready to go you know it's, it's just super simple there's no having to fit a door opening like you do with the hollow blocks a light there so you can see the wall's been rendered on the hollow block they're getting the partition done they like a little bit along the edge on it and um they have missed the box right here i had to get them to chisel that in put that in see this is why i just tell you again and again i really hope you all appreciate this sacrificial work right here i had done of showing you hollow block compared to this and look here this is another thing about that rendering it gets these little hairline cracks in it because it's portland real strong portland mix and of course they say all oh, those will feel when you skim coat it yeah well, nevertheless, it will be the only spot in this home is these two little CR walls that are done their way. And uh, period. The inside is going to get mostly all tile. And uh, there's going to be a good bit of tile over here on this too. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. Got all of these holes filled for the bolts. You see these dots everywhere. Got all those holes filled. That's some good progress. Coming over here into this next room. It's the same thing. Uh, it looks wet in here because they were throwing water to sweep up all the dust and the mess they made. So they just threw water. So that's why it looks so wet. But I got the plumbing set on that this morning myself. Didn't take me just a minute to do it. It's pretty simple. Then they got in here and render this wall as well. You can see their nylon pulled there on it. You can physically see through the rendering where the blocks are, how it's drying. Um, I don't think they did any more on the inside in here. No, that's just my little form up in there for the shower valves. So right where the hardware will go on right there. And another outlet they had missed also that I had to make them come back and uh, chisel in for right here. Not a fan of any of that hollow block work. Sometimes give them a little leeway. Say, you know what? Y'all say y'all have this here, have at it. And then sit back and watch if they do right or if they do wrong. And uh, with what I've seen, well, you saw it too. So that's why I'm going to stick with the forming right there and make sure that nothing is missed, no corners are cut, uh, that boxes are set right and all. It is very important, very important. But it's really, really lowering my cost on this building by being so hands-on and doing so much work. Like all of that forming you see upstairs up there, that's all me. I've, I've been up there just... Moving right along by myself, other than them helping me get the bolts through. And, uh, yep, it's, don't bother me at all. Enjoy it. Melinda's down here playing some good music while I was doing that. And she has some George Strait going. Ah, Mel and I, we went and seen old George. We went to uh, the T-Mobile Center, I believe, or whatever it's called, in Las Vegas. And, uh, and we watched old George, my... My Uncle Gary is the one that headed that up, and his uh, his kids was going, my cousins, and their spouses and all. And he said, you know what, y'all should join in with us. So uh, we did too, and we bought plane tickets and all. And we all flew out as, in a group and uh, stayed there in Vegas to go see old George. See you later, man. To go see old George, boy. I, I tell you, uh, I love old George. And it was so funny. Because the girl that opened up, and I forget her name right now, but the girl that opened up for him there was from Mineola, Texas. Just East Texas, right down the road from us. Well, I'm going to close out the day. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. 
a wonderful evening, morning, whatever it may be for you. Uh, looking at a cat down here playing. And just know that even on a rainy day, you can find happiness.